Hey welcome back this is Sid. Now picture this, you had a great shoot, the model was perfect, the lighting was great and there's hardly any retouching to be done. But then you look at the backdrop floor and it's a nightmare. But fear not my friend, in this video I'm going to help you save hours by showing you the most effective way to clean backdrops in photoshop. Now I'm going to show you two techniques. The first one is for white or lighter backdrops and the second technique will be for darker backdrops. Once we finish with the white backdrop, I'll tell you why we have a second technique for the darker backdrops. So let's start with the white backdrop. The thing is with lighter backdrops, when you do high key lighting, the backdrop doesn't retain much texture. So we can get away with simpler techniques like using a median filter or surface blur. So to start with, I'm going to create a curves layer and use this white eyedropper tool and click on any areas in the shadow that I want to be white. If you want to understand each of these tools better, make sure to check out the curves video. Now I'm going to click over some shadow areas that I want to be completely white and have to be careful not to make the main shadow of the woman white. If that happens, just click on some other area again. Okay, so this has cleaned up a few dirt around the floor and also balanced the exposure of the floor with the background because you see the floor was a bit underexposed before. So I'm going to use my brush tool with the black color and mask out the upper body of the model. So now that we have a balanced exposure, I'm going to merge these two layers on a new layer. Now in the next step, I'm going to blur out the dirt on the floor without destroying the shape of the shadows. For this, I'm first going to use the surface blur filter. I'm going to use a very low threshold of either 3 or 5. What you need to see is that the shape of the shadow is intact and then you can increase the radius even more. Now the next step, I'm going to use median on top of this. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can use median directly on the same layer or you can create the copy of this layer and then go to noise and then median. The reason I do surface blur before is because the median filter modifies the shape of the shadow. So if you just use median and increase the radius to clean the dirt, the shape of the shadow changes a bit. So if you're very particular about that, I would suggest do the surface blur first and then add median. As you can see, even after using the surface blur before, the median is still distorting the shape of the shadows. And that's why I created a separate layer for median. So now I'm going to mask this out. So I'm going to select my surface blur layer and create a mask and bring it on top of the median layer. Now with a black brush, I'm going to paint over the dirt that the surface blur couldn't wipe out and the mask will reveal the median below. Now this step is not necessary if you're not too particular about the shape of the shadow, but I'm showing you the proper way to do it. So now that we have a clean floor, I'm going to group these two layers and create a mask. Now all I have to do is paint on the mask to reveal the model from the original image below. You just have to pay extra attention to the mask where the model's feet are touching the floor. Now this looks good enough. Now you can add a bit of noise or film grain on top of this and clip it to the group of blurred layers by pressing Alt or Option and holding your cursor in between the two layers and then clicking it. So when you clip these two layers, the noise or film grain will only affect the blurred layers. So now you can zoom in and adjust the opacity of the film grain to match it with the original image. With white, it won't be that visible, but with certain lighter colors like peach or cream, the film grain makes a difference. Now let's take a look at the before and this is the after. As you can see, we have kept the shape of the shadow pretty much same as the original. And that's why we had to use a surface blur and median together. And as I said before, if that doesn't matter, you can straight away do median and mask it out. So this is how you do it on a white background. Now let's move on to the darker backdrop and I'll tell you why we have a different technique for this. The reason we cannot use median on a duplicate layer for this image is because it blurs out all the texture. And compared to the lighter backdrops, the texture on darker backdrops is pretty visible. And the more the light you throw on them, the more it becomes visible. And in lighter backdrops, if you throw more light, the texture overexposes and kind of blends away. And that's why you can get away with surface blur or median and with a little bit of noise on it. And if you just blur and add noise over a dark background, it doesn't blend with the original image. 
And that's why I'll be using frequency separation 5 for this. In this video, I've already shared an action for frequency separation 5 and also explained in details how it works. So make sure to check that out. So I'll run that similar action of frequency separation 5 from the panel. So the first step is suppress the high and the mid layer. And I like to keep the radius of 10 because it removes just the right amount of texture from the image which will end up in the high layer. So I'll click OK and the next pop-up will be for the lower mid layer. And I'm going to choose a threshold of around 3 because I don't want the surface blur to spread out a lot. And in the final step I need to set the blur for the low layer. Again over here I'm going to keep the threshold at around 5. And you can increase the radius even more if you want. Ok this looks about right. So now we have this image split into 5 different frequencies all grouped together. So I'm going to start by turning off the visibility of all the layers except the low layer. Now if you see any imperfections or spots, we'll use the patch tool to clean them out. So one thing I like to do is to hold shift and make different selections. And then press shift delete to use content aware fill. And once you hit enter, all the imperfections will be gone in just one move. So now I'm going to the high layer and turn on the visibility. So you can see all the texture is here along with the imperfections. So now I'm going to show you this trick which will remove all the imperfections and keep only the texture. And I do this by using the dust and scratches filter. So I'll go to noise and then dust and scratches. Now the trick is to use a very low threshold of around 2 to 5 whichever works for your image. So with the threshold you can control what imperfections you want to disappear. Now we can wipe out the texture completely with dust and scratches but to make it look believable and organic I'm going to leave some of the texture and imperfections in it. And then with the radius you can choose the intensity of the blur. And for those who don't know the radius of dust and scratches is the exact same algorithm as the median filter. So let's click OK and have a look. Most of the imperfections are gone and the grains and the color noise of the original image is intact. I'm going to turn on the visibility of the upper high layer just to see how it looks. So it adds a little bit of more texture. And if I invert the upper high layer by pressing Ctrl or Command I, it makes it even more smoother. This is just a trick for you to know and it might not work every time. For this image, I think I'll keep the upper high layer off. Ok so back to the high layer, I can use the healing brush or the patch tool to clear out some of these areas that have been messed out. So that looks good enough. Now I'm going to click on the mask of the group and with a black brush paint over the model to reveal her from the original image below. And this step might require some accuracy. So take your time with this, especially the areas that are touching the floor. And the rest of the areas on the upper body you can just clean it out fast. So there, let's look at the before and the after. You can also add a little bit of film grain on top of this and maybe bring it back within this group so it affects only the blurred areas and adjust the opacity so it blends with the backdrop perfectly. Now let's zoom in this area and as you can see the backdrop looks original meaning it doesn't look blurred out with median and added a fake noise over it. Now I could have wiped out all the texture completely with dust and scratches and the little bit of texture that you see is natural and organic. So this was the reason I didn't delete all the texture in the dust and scratches step. These little bit of imperfections make the backdrop floor look very real. Now you can try this technique using the regular frequency separation with just high and low layers. The reason I think it works better with frequency separation 5 is because the lack of the mid frequency layers gives the background floor a very smooth effect. And these mid frequencies when you do a single split usually ends up in the high layer or the low layer. So it will be a lot more work to remove it from there. Anyway you can download the frequency separation 5 action from the description in the frequency separation video. I'll link it again below this video. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to support our channel and ring the bell to be notified for future videos. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.